Good morning, good morning, my friends. Welcome to the show. We are actually starting out with something a little bit steamy this morning with handsome rakes, elegant balls, and matchmaking mamas. The world seems to be going crazy for Bridgerton. Now, the Regency romance produced by the Shonda Rhimes is the most watched Netflix series in history. Here's how you know it's super popular. It was spoofed on Saturday Night Live, starring the dreamy actor Reggae Jean Page, and he plays the Duke in the very first season of this. So Bridgerton is actually based on books that were written 20 years ago by best-selling author, who also happens to be a Seattle resident, Julia Quinn. She explained what it's like to see her characters on the screen. What was it like when the Shonda Rhimes not only said, I'm a fan, but hey, I want to make a series out of that. Take me to that moment. I, I couldn't believe it. I was sitting in Starbucks, as one does, because okay. I live in Seattle, and yeah. uh, pretending to write, as one does in a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And I get a phone call from my agent, and he said, I just had the most interesting call. And I said, oh, he said, have you heard of Shonda Rhimes? And I said, <laughs> yes. <laughs> After I had the initial conversation with him, you know, basically she asked or, or her people asked, are the rights available? And is she interested in having her books adapted? And I, I can't believe he even called me to consult because I'm like, <laughs> Um, he got back and I immediately texted my best friend, all caps. Well, I tried to call her. She didn't answer. I texted her, all caps, call me. She thought someone had died because this is not how we usually communicate. <laughs> and it just kind of went on from there. And it was this amazing experience because so many writers I know, not romance writers, but other fields have had books adapted mm -hmm. and they say, or not adapted, optioned. And they'll say, look, I've had, I have a friend, she said, every book I've written gets it optioned and none of them get made. And that's not uncommon. And so then you just say, well, you know, you get a little money, you'd be happy with that. But every step of the way, it felt like this was actually going to happen. And I, I, you know, something would happen, I'd be like, don't get your hopes up. You know how Hollywood is, but then something else would happen. And I think, I think this might actually happen. And then it just kept getting better. I mean, first it was Shondaland, then Netflix came on. And then before I knew it, they're like, oh, by the way, we have Julie Andrews. At which point I, I may have died and come back to life. Everything about it has been amazing and spectacular. And Chandra chose, she chose to use a multiracial cast, mm -hmm. something that you've been very much behind. How do you think this is going to help as we go forward in telling these stories, both in literature and in life? So with Shonda and Chris Van Dusen, he's the showrunner, making this big, diverse, inclusive cast, what it's doing, it's allowing more people to see themselves in the story, mm -hmm. which I think is incredibly important because it is ultimately a happy story. And th that's what romance novels are. They're all about the happy ending. Yeah. That's the only thing they all have in common. People say, oh, aren't they all the same? They're not, except that they all have a happy ending. Which is why and, we read them. Yes. And <laughs> But I want everyone to be able to imagine themselves in the happy ending. And I will be honest, I'm not sure I understood how badly this was needed until I started seeing the reaction of people who don't necessarily look like me and their happiness with the cast and you know the casting announcement for season two the lead female character is going to be played by Simone Ashley who is I believe British Indian you know and I've seen all these people saying like a brown skinned girl she's going to wear the fancy ball gown and it's bringing so much joy to so many people and so much hope and so much representation I think it's amazing and the feeling that I get most of all is gratitude because this creative team has been able to expand my universe in ways that I don't know that I could have done on my own because one thing you know people keep looking at the cast which which is wonderful but what they don't realize is that the writer's room behind the cast was incredibly diverse and anytime you get a larger group of people no matter what their backgrounds, you get just a larger group of imaginations and lived experiences to help build out a story. And so they were able to expand my world in this gorgeous, spectacular manner. And I couldn't be happier or more proud. Absolutely. Another, another issue that I love that you tackle in your books is feminism. Mm -hmm. You hit that head on, especially at a time when that, that was not really a thing to, to, to be spoken about. Why is this so important to you, even when you're, you're working in another genre? Well, I think 
I mean, it comes back to who I am. I have always considered myself a feminist. I don't know that I could write a book that isn't infused with some level of this idea that men and women are, well, not the same, are, should be, are and should be inherently equal and have the same opportunities. Now, I write in a time period when that was very much not true, much more so than today. I mean, we're still certainly not where we need to be today. It was a much bigger issue then. And so what I try to do is to show women kind of, you know, either breaking free or at least elbowing at the constraints that they have and yeah. to show often the beginning of this journey. Because I think for a lot of people, it's difficult to picture yourself as maybe the woman who's like, you know, knocking down the wall and, and you know, running over the ramparts, but maybe they can picture themselves as the woman who has, you know, slowly and carefully pulled out a brick or two in the wall so that somebody else can knock it down. And I think it's so important to celebrate all of those women as well. And so I feel that I have written a lot of stories where you have these women who might not be viewed by history as extraordinary because they're not the ones who have been the first to attend university or to have you know integrated something or, or things like that, but they are the ones who are laying the groundwork for it by recognizing inequality and inequity in their own lives and, and pushing back against it to varying degrees of success. I love that. I love that. I love that it doesn't have to be, like you say, knocking down the walls, but it's just noticing and speaking out in the way you can, which is something we can all continue to learn today. And speaking of love, are you ready to indulge in the romance yet? I mean, we've got more to tempt you with coming up with Julia Quinn. We have a lightning round of Bridgerton questions like, who's her favorite rake? That's coming up a little bit later, so stick around. Welcome back. We are still talking about romance and I cannot get enough of Bridgerton or author, local author, Julia Quinn. After our interview, I put her through a Bridgerton lightning round. Check it out. Which character would be your best friend? Oh, Penelope. Yes, yes. How many seasons would you wait before you got married? Oh, well, you know, I met my husband when I was 18 and I married him when I was 26. So I guess eight. Eight seasons. Oh, very well, very well. Which character would you want to throw a ball for? Penelope, again. Yes. She deserves it. She deserves all the good things. Who is the biggest rake? Oh, uh, Anthony, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Season two is going to be. Ooh. I love the little tease. Literally, that's all I know is that it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, which character would you like to sit down and share a meal with? Oh, Lady Danbury. Mm. Although of the characters I wrote, Lady Danbury, but. I wouldn't mind Queen Charlotte, who's not in the books, but she's in the show, but she's just incredible. So yeah, maybe that would be fun. Which Bridgerton girl has the best style? Oh, uh, I'd say Daphne right now. Daphne? You know, yeah, we'll see. I, I know a lot of people love Eloise's style, but like those bows to me seem too constricting. It does seem a little constricting. I love her sass. Um, oh, she's awesome. I necessarily love the style. Which would have been your preferred feminine pastime? All right. <laughs> Writing letters or needlework? Writing letters. I'm with you on that. I'm, I, I would probably stab myself. My hands would be covered with ink, though. I don't know how people do the, the quills and whatnot. I, well, I get, I'm left-handed. My hands are already covered in ink. So That's I true, yeah. That. Bonnet or no bonnet? No bonnet. <laughs> well, hmm. They didn't have sunscreen, so maybe bonnet. Good point, right? It was so fun. Julia is also passionate about supporting local bookstores. And in fact, she stops by the University Bookstore in Seattle several times a month, nink, nink, wink, wink, nod, nod, uh, to autograph and personalize any books you order online. So details on that are on our website.